Hey folks, Engineer775, again, always something new on the channel, and what we're doing here today is more battery-less, no batteries, uh, pumping systems, and we've added a hot water system to the same array. What do I mean? I've got four 295-watt modules here, mission panels, and we've got a CU200 controller, you see the lights on. We also have this MN stop switch, which is typically used for wind turbines but it makes for a nice little transfer switch with this slide I can switch and as you can see I just turned the Grundfos off and it turns and I'm able to turn my hot water system on so I'm gonna turn the Grundfos back on so it's a it's a little transfer switch these breakers are mounted in here they are the standard midnight din rail breakers I guess this is a baby box it's been modified whatever we modified it <laughs> we're using two 300 volt um, 15 amp breakers in here to um, be able to transfer between uh, the water pump and the water heater and what that did is basically save them from having to put up another array this size so the goal here in a grid down off the grid scenario is to be able to heat water all day long this would be off I'll we'll go in the off situation here. So all day long, this array is dumping water into a water heater. And we, we ran um, the wire into the house. We're working on a water heater now. We trenched over and we see over there next to the meter base, we brought in some, uh, some number eight stranded in there. So the other thing we did is we added a well pump we added a Grundfos SQ Flex 11 SQF2. This pump, this well produces over 20 gallons a minute. We're pumping at 11, so no problem there. We've added, in order to get this pump to work with the house, we added a, another type of pressure switch. This is a reverse action pressure switch. You can see there's kind of funky compared to the normal Schneider or Square D pressure switch. And we see, you see our two control wires coming out of, I don't know if you can see them or not, um, and then they terminate over here in the CU200 controller. So what, what am I doing? I am basically giving them the ability to heat water all day long, PV direct to the lower element in the water heater, and then at the end of the day, they, um, or any part during the day, they can flip over. This is with no power. If their grid is down, they can flip and turn the pump back on. So you just come out here, turn the pump back on. Now they've got a tank full of hot water, which is like a battery, thermal thermal battery. And then they would be able to take a shower, run their house, and everything would be controlled between that pressure switch that we set out here and this controller. So they'd be able to live normally and they have enough, enough water. Then, next day, when they're done doing what they needed to do, they'd come out here, flip it back, and be able to heat their water. Now, in a grid up situation when everything is fine, this system's gonna be in water heating mode all the time. So I just wanted to give them, if the power goes out, an opportunity to not have to leave, to be able to get water out of their well, to be able to not only get water, but to be able to take a, a pressurized shower and take a hot shower um, using just four panels. So anyway, this is the latest, um, I don't want to say creation, but uh, working with the customer to kind of work within their budget, but to give them everything they need. The other thing that's cool about it, there are no inverters and there are no batteries. There are no charge controllers. This is PV Direct, folks. This is the way to do solar. Anyway, that's my opinion. It's all DC and um, and that's it. So let me take you in to show you. We're, we're putting a tank booster on the water heater right now. And the tank booster allows me to take their water heater and increase the capacity of it. What? You, I'm filming. Abraham is studying the tank booster paperwork. Just checking washer location? Yes. Direction. And uh, so we're going to put a, we are putting a tank booster on the top of this water heater and uh, we're in the process of making the crossover connection between the cold and the hot and we do have a heat well on it so we can check and mix it and make sure that nobody gets scalded in the house and once that's hooked up we can turn the water back on and do some testing 
But in the meantime, we're gonna we're gonna test our solar pump out. Okay, it's not very impressive, but it is raining, so there's water out of your well without batteries. Using the Grunfoss, we only got we only have 90 watts, but you see the LED. It shows it's pumping. I'm gonna look straight on green LED. We have, we're running at 90 watts. What do we got for amps? A half an amp. Half an amp. Times like 100 volt. 100, 130 volts, 140 volts. That's mm -hmm. like 70 watts there. Clamp meter says about 70. The CU200 says about 90. Oh, we've made it to 100. 100 watts. So she's pumping. So this sure beats a hand pump. If you, you know, you, the Grunfoss pump is about the same cost as a simple pump, and that's a lot of water. It's still, it's raining right now. So can you pump water in the rain? Yes, you can. There's proof. So even in a grid down situation, this it is lifting from 40, 40 feet. The pump's capable of lifting hundreds of feet, but you know, depends how much solar and how much it is raining. So it's all a function of your total dynamic head, what you can get out of your well. So th this was the goal, that they could get water, take a shower, pump this directly into their house. Okay, you see a red light flashing. That means that the solar hot water controller is working correctly. And uh, we have connected it again to the bottom element of this water heater. We've turned the thermostat all the way up to 150. We have a thermostatic mixing valve in here. And um, the thermometer, we had to turn 90 because we ran out of space here right up against this ceiling, but that's not a problem. So we tested everything, made sure the house had hot water, can fully function off the top element. And uh, right now it's raining outside, but we're still putting 150 watts into the bottom of the water heater. I know that's not much, but it is raining. So, okay. Um, if you can ask, answer any questions you have, let me know. This is the Tank Booster Kit. In case you're curious, it's a Tank Booster Pro in three quarter inch version. That sits right on the top of any standard water heater and allows you to uh, turn your water heater into a uh, a little bit more, get a little more thermal storage, about probably 20 gallons more hot water. Depends on how hot you mix it down to or mix it up to, however you want to look at it. But all right, that's it. So we're just going to load up and our tools. We're off to another job where we're going to continue the quest of DC uh, applications. We're going to put up another array like that and we're going to make a golf cart charging station. The gentleman has a 36 volt golf cart and we have some excess capacity. We want to share uh, the water pump pump so efficiently. There's a lot of a lot of days that the solar is just hanging out doing nothing. So we want to divert it over to a, a golf cart that's used on the little homestead every day. So we want to charge it on solar. And that's the goal. So we're going to load up, hopefully get everything loaded up before the rain hits go to the next job and uh, we'll be off tell we're and we got we're just carrying around a million solar panels so modules so if you need one let me know if we're in, you're in North Carolina need some panels let me know <laughs> we're also bringing ram pumps with us we got a customer that's gonna meet me tomorrow we're gonna deliver his certified rife ram pump we just installed it made sure that everything worked and uh, cut them a great deal on this 10 SDU, uh, 8, 10 HDU, sorry, heavy duty unit. So let's load up. We got to install a water heater, golf cart charging station, and a solar hot water heating system from four panels identical to that at a job about six, six miles away from where we are now. All right, this has been a really good two days of. Uh, getting this done so we installed a, a well pump two pumps in one well we installed the solar with a transfer switch and a CU200 so we can either pump water or heat water with the same array and uh, we brought that in here to a uh, little LB going in under the crawl space and over to the water heater I had a, some extra eight AWG so we're not we're not losing anything no voltage drop for this job and we're at 140 volts 
open circuit roughly. So we have found this to be pretty efficient. So these folks really pay attention to their, their utility bills. So they're going to be giving me feedback for how well it worked or didn't work in terms of saving them hot, a lot of money on their hot water bill. All right, we're just going to pack up the remainder of our gizmos and head, head to the next job. That's what's left. Shrapnel. <laughs> A little shrapnel, but everything's great. We're very thankful and happy we got her done. This is Engineer 775 signing out.